Hey everyone, so this video is going to show you how I'm making kits for my students in my high school ceramics room. My room looks a little bit chaotic and a bit of a mess right now. You can see the table behind me. I have it spaced out with some blue tape indicating I have three spots where students will be able to sit and then I have you know like little lines like a no parking zone over one side where the students will not be able to sit um, to accommodate for social distancing with the pandemic right now. Um, I have fewer kids in my classroom because the requirement in uh, our county in Ohio is they need to have the kids three feet apart and everyone will be wearing facial coverings. Everyone has to wear a mask. I took mine off just for the video right now, uh, but normally I'm in here wearing my mask uh, as I'm working. So this kit is what we are making. So if we go remote and we are... So we are in person starting Monday with all of our students. Um, actually, well, we're on a bit of a blended model for the first uh, couple of days. We're seeing half the students on to Monday and half the students on Tuesday, and then we'll do virtual on Wednesday sort of thing. But the plan is as of uh, August 31st, that next week, we are going to be students, uh, seeing students every day. Now, that will last as long as it can last. But we all know that as students and staff begin to uh, get sick or they have to get quarantined, then we might end up by having to go remote. And I don't want to happen what happened last spring when my kids were at home and we had no ability to work on clay because they had no materials. So I'm planning this time around and I have been making kits. Now the kits are file boxes that I I have made into a damp box. If you're not familiar with what a damp box is, let me just show you. It has plaster in the bottom. I have some Ziploc bags down there, but it has about an inch of plaster in the bottom. So as they're working on projects, the plaster, you can add moisture to it so it stays very moist and damp. The plaster will help keep their projects in the leather hard state as they're working so their projects don't dry out and get bone dry and then they have it ruined at home. Also, uh, these file boxes are kind of cool because in the lid, they have this little, um, this little compartment, which works great for tools. So some of the tools that I'm giving them is I've made a clay cutter. Um, and I'm, I'm going to show how I did a lot of these things in the video. Uh, a rounded kidney shaped rib, um, a straight rib, and then I have like a little one that I made that's like a scoring tool. Um, I've got like a little, just a regular uh, little sponge. And I have a needle tool that I made from a dowel and a, a brass brad. And then on the other end, I made a carving tool. And then I have a couple of paint brushes because we're using grogged clay, so I use paint brushes. This is the tip um, that's all pointy. It's kind of like a Kemper tool. Um, if you have seen some of my other videos, sometimes we call it the Wenzel. I had a colleague that once called it a Wenzel. And this paintbrush I have uh, sanded to have a nice flat scrapey side and again a rounded end. And then lastly, I have, this is a, a wooden knife. It's a disposable wooden knife, like instead of a plastic knife, it's a wooden knife. Um, it's it's kind of sharp. It's not quite as sharp as a fettling knife, uh, but both the wooden knife and the wooden fork, they have a nice rounded end. So uh, it, it's gonna be sort of like a, a Kemper tool that can help blend things and stuff. And then I will be giving them probably about, uh, I'm imagining about five pounds of clay, depending on which level it is. Maybe um, one of my advanced levels, I might give them a little bit more, like maybe closer to eight. I am going to just one clay body this semester. I normally do three and um, I'm just limiting it so we don't have cross contamination with the different clay bodies in their bins. So. This video uh, shows how I put together the kits and uh, shoot me any questions or comments if you have any. And good luck everyone. 
Another thing that I forgot to mention is uh, the carpet tube that I'll be giving each child. Um, it's uh, very sturdy. It looks a little wider than I intended it because I thought I thought carpet tubes were skinnier, but this is fine. It's very sturdy. It's not going to collapse. They can use this as a rolling pin, and I'll also be giving each kid a piece of canvas, probably like a two foot by two foot piece, something like that. Um, I'll be cutting that. So that is the kit along with the clay that I will be putting on the inside. The first tool will be the ribs and I'm starting off with key cards that I got from a local hotel as a donation. My objective with the cards is I'm going to cut them out and I'm going to make them into a stack. Uh, just like a woodworker might make a stack of wood if they're cutting through multiple pieces. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm laying them out and I'm using double stick tape on the back and then I will place them all together and uh, I try to line them up fairly nicely and I think I was doing stacks of about 30 of them. Um, I could have done more or less but um, 30 worked well for me and then I'm putting together my small stacks to make a big stack and then I can draw whatever shape I need on there and I'm doing a kidney shaped rib. And then I'm cutting them on my bandsaw. I realize I should have put my uh, support down a little lower on it, but I cut that out. And then here I'm making some scoring tools. In the scrap end, I'm just making some little slices and I'm gonna cut those in half. And then here I'm doing some where it's uh, more like notches that are like shaped like a V. And there we've got my cutout ribs and notched cards. The kids will be taking uh, sandpaper on them. Here are my carpet tubes that I got for rolling pins. And I'm just making them as long as I could fit them in my bandsaw. So they're roughly around 12 inches or so. And I would have liked to have had smaller tubes, but these will work. Okay, well, I totally forgot to turn the video camera on before I cut these last things. So I had some uh, big bundles, um, three foot long uh, bundles of dowel rods that I taped together in six different places and I had marked them. So they were gonna be six inches long. And then I just cut those apart on my bandsaw too. Sorry, I just totally forgot to turn the camera on. I also forgot to show that I put a slice in one end of the dowel rod with my bandsaw. It's probably about three quarters of an inch deep. And then I also drilled a small hole on the other end. Um, now the hole, the side where I drilled the hole, I'm sanding that because I want to take off a little bit of the bulk of the clay because I am going to be um, attaching the brad there and I don't want it to be real bulky. Now I'm sanding uh, my paint brushes and the handle of one paintbrush, the smallest paintbrush, I'm making it come to a nice little point like a Kemper tool. And then the other paintbrush, the big chubby one, I am just making a flat edge so it will be kind of a scraper again like a Kemper tool is. Now I'm ready to glue the brass brads onto the dowel rod and I'm making a two-ended tool and you can see that's the end where I have sanded where the brad is and uh, I'm trying to get that to come into focus and I'm going to show how I'm going to attach the brad. Now I have a little cup of water there. I'm going to wet down my sanded ends of my dowel rods first. Uh, I'm using Gorilla Glue and Gorilla Glue says to dampen one of the surfaces uh, before you add the glue. So I'm just dampening those just in small numbers to allow them to get wet. And now here are the brass brads that I'm using. I chose brass so it wouldn't rust. And then as I said, I'm using Gorilla Glue. Now I have found this method to be uh, somewhat effective here. I'm putting it right on the edge of my um, surface and then I'm going to be dipping my brad oh I had to clean off the top of the Gorilla Glue forgot about that then I'm dipping the the end of the brad where the nail would hit it into the glue and inserting that and I'm using some pliers to help me get it in there a little bit more easily dropped one there oops and they're a little tricky they should be tight 
and the glue will expand out a little bit and it's not a big deal I'll have the kids clean it off if there's glue um, that is kind of on the outside and in the way they can just peel it off and this one I slowed down to real time so you can kind of see it takes me less than 20 seconds to insert the brad into the dowel and push it in there so there we go easy as that so here I want to show you how I'm making this little tool this is just uh, the um, tape measure that I have uh, cut and then bent and then glued and inserted and glued now I am using the dowels that I have with the needle tool on one end and then the other end I'm going to be using Gorilla Glue so I'm going to just douse this in water real quick Gorilla Glue um, it's the kind of Gorilla Glue that expands it says that the surface should be one of the surfaces should be wet and the tape measure is thin enough that I can cut it with a pair of scissors now to be quite honest, I probably should have purchased a slightly better um, tape measure. I just purchased a cheap one at the Dollar Tree, and hopefully it will last okay. All right, so I'm cutting these in half once I've cut the strips, and I did have a little measurement, um, I forget, I think it's like two and a half inches that I've used for this. So then I'm taking the strip and I'm just creasing it in half. Okay, and then once I crease it in half, then I'm going to make the angled cut, I mean the angled fold, okay? So like what I have here, I'm going to use, I found that this was the easiest way, I'm just gonna use my pliers and I'm going to fold it right up against the edge of the pliers kind of push it to make sure that I have a nice fold and then space it the same on this side. So that is the shape that I'm left with. Now I'm ready to insert this and glue it and I do have some pre-cut pieces of black just electrical tape that I'm going to be using. And I have a little puddle of Gorilla Glue right here that you can see. I'm going to take my Gorilla Glue, spread it on my surfaces there. And remember that Gorilla Glue expands. It expands, I think it says like three to four times the size. Okay, now I'm going to squeeze those together and just insert them into the slot. So this is the slot that I made on my band saw. I just did a nice, just a straight slot in the width of the blade that fits in there. And then I am going to take electrical tape, wrap it around the exterior of this. That's gonna do two things. I'm really wrapping it tightly, so it's kind of hoping that it's squeezing together the wood a little bit, but also as the glue wants to ooze out, it'll help protect it. So I'll do one more so you can see that. Crease. Crease. Glue, and I did find that it was much easier to do it with the pliers. Insert. go. Now if there was any concern like this was gonna back out or something I could always put tape over the end of it but it looks like it's fine. And now we're on to making the bins. So I got delivered the great wall of boxes to my house and I had to take in 155 bins to school and uh, to mix up the plaster I'm doing this outside. Now I want to mention the trash can that you see there has lined with multiple bags so in case anything leaks 
I have six gallons of water uh, that are in there and I am slowly adding my plaster by sprinkling it. Um, because this is sped up, it's a little hard to tell, but I'm actually taking my scooper and I am sprinkling. Now, I happen to be wearing my, my COVID mask at the time because I donated all my PPE back in the spring, so I don't even have a regular dust mask there anymore. Um, but at least I'm not bringing that in. And that's why I'm doing it outside to keep down the, the plaster dust in my classroom. So as you sprinkle it, you, you're letting it disperse in the water. Now you wanna keep putting the plaster in until you get a small mountain that forms. I have other videos on mixing plaster, so you can check those for more detail. But the small mountain will indicate, see right there, there's the small mountain. It indicates that it's, it's fully uh, absorbing and it can't absorb much more. So you let it sit for two minutes once you have reached the small mountain stage. And then at the end of two minutes, after it begins to absorb, then you mix it. Now, normally, if I were doing molds, I would put my hand in there, my gloved hand, and I would mix it up. But because this is such a large batch, I am using my drill, and I am uh, just trying to mix it up. Two minutes is, is all it takes. And I did try to make sure that I didn't have too many wrinkles in the bottom of the bag, by the way. And also on successive batches, I actually sucked the air out of there. Now I have a scooper that's pre-measured. I have a line on it to indicate how much plaster I need to have in the scooper to get an inch of plaster in the bin. And it's about seven cups for me. So I have the bins all ready to go. So I just, you know, I take my little wheeled trash can around and I'm filling them up one at a time. And out of the six gallon batch, I think I got 22 um, bins, which is better. I was imagining I would get 18, so I was very happy that I got like four bonus. And um, I think I got up to 25 one time. I'm not too sure why I ended up with three more bins. Maybe I just wasn't as precise. Now I'm uh, kind of shaking them or tapping them. I want to try to get out the air bubbles that were certainly incorporated in there when I mixed it. Um, so I'm going around the room and I'm just tapping all the bins to try to get out the air bubbles. And you can see it's definitely splattered on the inside, but I'm going to have the kids take big sponges and a bucket of water and clean out any of that debris. So that will not be there when they eventually take it home. In addition to wiping down any of those splatters, um, we could take and just wipe down the surface, maybe even with a green scrubber pad if they have any irregularities in the surface so it's smooth.